Anybody have a chance to breathe yet? The free agency frenzy is in full force. We got a lot to talk about so far. I'm actually like surprised me and you talked about this, Danny. We're like, oh, maybe we'll go live four or five o'clock. Give it a chance for some deals to kick in. Maybe there'll be some big name free agents still out there. They're ripping off the board at this point in time. I think the headliners, what? Kirk Cousins? We got to talk about Kirk Cousins first, right? I mean, Kirk Cousins going to the Atlanta Falcons. We were talking about it pre-stream. You're still on the box, but... I'm of the opinion, man, like this makes the Falcons a legitimate threat. I I mean, is that to win the NFC championship? Not necessarily, but I think they're going to be the four seed and I think they're going to be an 11 ish type of win team. Yeah. I mean, they're still going to not win the division because we're still the better we'll team, see. but no. um, I mean, fantasy outlook, fantasy implications is the big thing that we're doing over here. Let's let's absolutely hammer the drum for Drake London season. That is the person I'm most excited for. I mean, obviously it's great news for Bijan. It's great news for Kyle Pitts. It's bad news for Justin Jefferson. It's bad news for Jordan Addison and TJ Hawkinson. The biggest winner of this to me is Drake London because he has oh, yeah. proven the ability to command a 25, 30% target share. And we know Kirk cousins, just like Matthew Stafford is a fantasy wide receiver kingmaker. And you get you're capable of commanding that kind of target share at wide receiver. Kirk Cousins is going to feed it to you, and he has no you know qualms about throwing the ball up for grabs. So for me, Drake London went from a fringe top twelve dynasty wide receiver to a solidified in the same tier as Garrett Wilson, AJ Brown, Puka Nakua, Malik Neighbors once he gets drafted, and Chris Olave. And I prefer London to Olave. He's currently my dynasty wide receiver ten after this move. Yeah, I think if you're looking at Drake London, obviously the massive winner, he went from, I mean, a guy that people were really pessimistic on, not seeing like that big time reveal of his full potential in this first couple of years due to the quarterback play until Kirk Cousins signed, man. I've seen people valuing him closer to the wide receiver 20, the wide receiver 21. Do I take Drake London or Nico Collins? Do I take Drake London or Jordan Addison? But I feel like this signing in particular can't, not only gets him like a tier above those guys, but solidifies him within the early third round type of startup area. Yeah, I feel pretty good to have been shouting by Drake London for the last two years, pretty much. Like, I feel like every Dynasty Trade Targets video I've done has had Drake London in it because, it, I mean, you had a wide receiver one profile who just didn't have a quarterback. And now we have, like, it's almost better that he has the type of quarterback that Kirk Cousins is because, like, you know, your Mahomes and Josh Allen types are so good that they elevate everybody else. Whereas Kirk Cousins is like, he just trusts his number one receiver. So this is like the perfect quarterback for Drake London. Oh, it's the nuts. I mean, we've saw him, we've seen him both in Washington and Minnesota, uh, in Minnesota, Minnesota support high value fantasy environments. So I'm excited. And obviously, I mean, a big winner for a guy like Kyle Pitts. We didn't really know exactly what was going on there. You know, he hasn't really been the same player since this rookie season. Obviously, the offense as a whole is going to be impacted. Kyle Pitts, fourth overall pick profile still. I think the ceiling's still there. And with Kirk Cousins there, I think he's ready to unlock it. Yeah, so let's have the Kyle Pitts discussion. We just said, you know, Drake London, him? probably a top 10 dynasty wide receiver. I have my tier one of dynasty tight ends as Sam Laporta, Brock Bowers, Mark Andrews, and Trey McBride. Previously, Kyle Pitts was my tight end seven in dynasty behind Dalton Kincaid and TJ Hawkinson. I mean, conversely, TJ Hawkinson just lost his quarterback. So I think it's pretty easy to say that he goes ahead of TJ Hawkinson. Does he go ahead of Kincaid? Does he go ahead of McBride? Does he go ahead of Andrews? Where does, uh, where does Kyle Pitts fit in here? Tight end four if you're including Brock Bowers. That's where I put him. Really? So you would put him ahead of McBride Mark or Andrews? Andrew, uh, uh, Mark Andrews, George Kittle. Uh, I mean, obviously, Travis Kelsey, Dalton Kincaid. Like, all those guys, I'm taking him above quite easily. So you have Mark Andrews at tight end five, eh? I have him at tight end five now, yeah. I mean, Trey McBride, the young factor, obviously, the volume that he showed at the end of last year. Brock Bowers, the prospect profile he has. And then, I mean, Sam Laporte is going to be the one across the board, given the age and the offense with Detroit. But... I mean, Kyle Pitts, like, I think he's in that tier, that next tier of Andrews, Kittle, Hawkinson, Kincaid. But I think you got to consider him the top of that tier, to be honest. And right oh, behind him. Absolutely. Right I think, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that he's now at least solidified as a top five tight end. And I wouldn't have any arguments with somebody saying he's three, probably. I don't think you could put him over McBride, given Agreed. what he did so far in his young career. They're both obviously young players. But yeah, man, I mean, we talked about it when we did the hardest players to rank video. It's like Kyle Pitts was difficult to, to evaluate because he was coming off of a major injury. Arthur Smith kind of used him as like a big wide receiver. They had Johnny Smith playing the inline role. All the concerns we had about Kyle Pitts are strictly just 
uh, ability based now. Basically, is Kyle Pitts an elite tight end in the NFL? His receiving grade is his rookie season, the yardage that he put up, you know, before he got injured in 2022, all that kind of indicates that, yeah, he probably is a really good NFL tight end. Now he's not going to have this super, super run heavy offense anymore because Zach Robinson, the whole scheme coming in, they're going to be more up tempo, more pass heavy. And he has a real quarterback to throw him the football and he's going to be playing his actual position. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Massive W for him. And like we kind of mentioned, tight end four, uh, assuming Brock Bowers. I think if you want to argue him versus Andrews, given the production, given the attachment to Lamar Jackson, I think that's fine. But anybody who's ranking Kyle Pitts as like tight end eight or tight end nine or in the Njoku range, like we got to adjust, man. Kirk Cousins is a big time upgrade. And I mean, we mentioned Bijan Robinson a little bit, but obviously big time news for him as well. Just adding a targets, quarterback. Targets, man. Targets. Well, targets, but also adding a quarterback the caliber, caliber of Kirk Cousins, getting them in scoring position, like we were talking about off camera. The Falcons are a top eight, possibly even fringe top five offense in the league the moment that Kirk Cousins puts that pen to ink. Yeah, pen I mean, the ink. question I guess you'd have is like, is Cousins ready to go week one? But I mean, given that like Rodgers was going to come back at the end of the season, I think torn Achilles for a quarterback, especially one like Cousins, who's not really a mobile guy anyway. I I'm not really that concerned about the situation. Again, do we want to overreact? Do we want to underreact? I mean, it's fun just talking about this. It's it's new. It's it's you know exciting. I think the proper reaction is, hey, if you weren't a Kyle Pitts guy before, here's your selling window. This is your selling window. You can get out of Kyle Pitts now. If you were a Kyle Pitts guy before, you probably should have been buying because the second he got a quarterback upgrade, this was very, very possible that he would be back up to the top of the tight end, you know, landscape in uh dynasty because I mean, Kyle Pitts is younger than Dalton Kincaid, right? Like I know he was, he's been in the league for a couple of years, but he was really young coming out. Guys like Kincaid, they were older coming out. Like Kyle Pitts is, I'm actually going to look up his exact age. I, I'm pretty sure he's like here. a week older than me or maybe a week younger. Like he's, he's really close to my age. Yeah. Just Kyle Pitts is 23.4 years old. Okay. Yeah. So I'm older than him. That's crazy. Yeah. Kyle Pitts is extremely, extremely young. Like there's there, like Michael Penix is older than Kyle Pitts. Who's in this draft class and Bo Nix. Like those guys are older than Kyle Pitts. So again, you got to contextualize the fact that this guy, some prospects aren't even in the NFL at his age. And he has already had two, you know, one really solid year in his rookie season, a half a year, his second season where he was starting to kind of turn things around again. He's never had a quarterback to this point in his career. And he was playing, after, you know, injury, uh, surgery or whatever that he had on his MCL PCL kind of issue that he had. So yeah, I mean, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, B. John Robinson, it's pretty much W's all around. How do you feel about Kirk cousins for this? I mean, it's, it's good news for his dynasty value. Cause I mean, he's got all these weapons to throw to. I, I feel kind of indifferent towards him because he would have been great in Minnesota as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have him in one league. I have a, a Justin Herbert, Kirk cousins, Bryce young kind of contending roster and I feel pretty good I actually happen to have London on that team as well now that I think about it yeah I, I mean uh, the assurance of him getting that four-year deal understandably that it's structured with the two by one I believe where they can get out after two they can get out after three but him having that type of assurance coming off the Achilles that guaranteed money up front is obviously a massive sign because although he's an older quarterback you pretty much can lock in two high-end type of years and when I say high-end like Real talk, you're ranking Kirk Cousins amongst the quarterbacks right now in terms of just purely redraft. Over, under, quarterback, 10.5 in your rankings. I think he'd be over that because you have to factor in the exciting, you know, rushing yeah. options like, you know, an Anthony Richardson, even if Justin Fields is starting somewhere, like those type of guys, Jane Daniels, once he gets into the NFL. That's fair. Any rushing quarterback is probably just going to get the nod just given how fantasy scoring works. But I think he's going to be a very solid, you know, QB 17, 15 and ADP I would kind smash of guy that value. who's going to be a good best ball pick, who's going to be, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, do you have anything else on the Kirk Cousins to Atlanta stuff? Because we have a lot well, more to get to that happened. Well, the last thing I will add to it. Okay, maybe not just strictly in quarterback rankings, but over under next year, assuming he plays 17. 19.5 fantasy points per game for Kirk Cousins, four point pass. That's probably points. about what he's going to put up. That's about yeah. what he puts up all the time. And who knows, man, like the Rams were, were gunning it uh, up and down the field. If, if Cousins is throwing like he was in Minnesota, you know, you can pencil in a top five ceiling for Drake London. You can pencil in a tight end one overall finish ceiling for Kyle Pitts. You can pencil in B. RB John Robinson B. John. having RB one overall upside and probably like, here's the other thing. Do do we take, is Bijan back in the conversation for RB1 overall off the board? Are we still taking McCaffrey or are we going with Bijan? I, I think I, I still lean Christian, but 
it's definitely a closer conversation. I think Bijan's got to be a top five overall pick and redraft. Well, it would be, it would have to be, in my opinion, if you're going to rank Bijan over Christian McCaffrey, it had to be the way we had it last year, where it's more so pessimism on the, uh, on the side of McCaffrey than it is optimism for Bijan. Because I mean, if you're pessimistic on Christian McCaffrey, he could be like your fourth overall player. If you're optimistic on him, you could take him as high as first overall. So it really just depends on somebody's thoughts of Christian McCaffrey. If he's closer to the, you know, fourth or fifth overall player in someone's rankings, I can see them having Bijan as the one over McCaffrey. But in terms of, can I see Bijan vaulting himself to being a top three overall player in fantasy football ahead of guys like McCaffrey, uh, CD Lamb, Tyree Kill? I don't really think it pushes them over the top there, just more so solidifies them as a mid first rounder. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you are uh, watching the stream, there's like 500 of you in here. So you better be 495 like right now. Of course, if you're, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. But um, let's transition away from Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. We'll have plenty of time to talk about this. We might put out a, like a pre-recorded video recapping all of this at some point um, yeah. this week as well. Um, I think the second biggest piece of news in terms of just like overall ADP and like the dynasty value at hand here. Uh, I called it today. I put 25 bucks down that uh, Philadelphia Eagles running back, Philadelphia Eagles great. Saquon Barkley is in town on a three-year contract worth, you know, mid-30s, I believe 36 mil or something like that. Absolutely um, predictable if you think about it. I mean, he played at Penn State. His family is from the New York area. It's a pretty close drive to Pennsylvania. That's why I put the bet down today. I saw rumors that they were in on him. It's crazy. So I saw Winks tweet out that the Eagles are like, they're the ones that convinced the NFL that running backs are not valuable by like, you know, just bargain binning DeAndre Swift and stuff like that. And then they bought low on the running back market by getting a game changing caliber talent for not game changing caliber money. If this was 2017, Saquon would have gotten 17 million a year. Yeah, most likely. And I mean, obviously massive deal from a fantasy perspective. Over under uh, the market having sake. I mean, we're going to find out in a little bit, by the way, potentially. Uh, we'll, you guys will see later in the stream, potentially. But um, where do you draft him? Is he over under 15.5 overall in drafts? Oh, he's going to go higher than that. I think higher? he'll be a first, think rounder. first rounder. Yeah. Yeah. I think he'll be a first rounder, maybe in like the mid to late area, but especially in casual leagues, man. It's not hard to talk yourself into Saquon Barkley running behind an elite offensive line, an offensive line he's never ran behind in a great offense that really, I mean, Outside of his rookie season, the the Giants haven't been more than like 16th in scoring offense. I mean, we got the whole, you know, tush push concerns. You know, he's going to be sniped on the goal line and that kind of stuff. But man, I, I, I this is like a don't overthink it situation. I've always yeah. been extremely high on the talent of Saquon Barkley. I think every time we've done, you know, debates and stuff like that, it's always me over you and Saquon debates. Oh, yeah. like I, I've always every just time. believed he's one of the best running backs in the league. He's kind of like one of these guys where it's like the fantasy production outside of his rookie season hasn't quite matched up to what the ability of the player is. I mean, he's healthy. He should, um, you know, be productive in that offense, you know, pass catching upside and touchdown upside, you know, concerns aside. I feel like it's just, this is common sense. He's in a very good offense. He's never been in a great offense and he's running behind a great offensive line. So projection bros might get a little bit sketchy on Saquon and be like, Oh, he's only projecting for Hurts. this many targets. He's not going to have this many touchdowns, but it's like, he's a much better version of Deandre Swift and he can do so, so much more than Swift could have done last year. Yeah, I mean, well, we were talking about it earlier today because I, I thought that he would sign with the Texans. You thought with the Eagles. The main reason why I didn't think that the Eagles would pull the trigger is just given the history of Howie Roseman, what he values, what type of positions he looks to target from a high value standpoint. He usually goes for corner, like we saw with Bradbury, like we saw with Darius Slay. He goes for the high value position. So seeing him drop the bag on a guy like Saquon Barkley, I'm not gonna lie, when I saw that report, I was I was pretty it's pretty overwhelmed, man, because I thought he would go to the Texans. And apparently the rumor was that they offered one and a half million more per year than the Texans. I think the Texans were at about 11.5 that they offered. So seeing the Eagles open up the purses, give Saquon what he wants, obviously support Jalen Hurts in the process. I mean, they got to be another top five offense season underway. And I feel like this is the type of game changing move that you make, given how you ended last season, probably morale in the locker room everything kind of going south at the end of last season for Philadelphia. You sign a talent like Saquon Barkley, who's respected among the players, man, that could really reignite what we saw at the beginning of last year when the Eagles got off to that 10 and one start. Yeah, absolutely. One last thing on the cousins thing too. I think Jordan Addison's buying window has officially opened um, because people are going to be probably concerned. What this tells me is that the Vikings are going to be really aggressive for a quarterback in the draft. I, I think they're going to sign Sam Darnold or it's Ryan. It's mayor Tannehill JJ. Or 
Yeah, and they're going to go after McCarthy or they're going to go after May, whoever's sliding in the NFL draft. So, um, yeah, going to be really interesting to see what Minnesota does at quarterback. Saquon to Philadelphia, like I said, I I think he's going to end up being a first-round redraft pick from a dynasty perspective. Again, another hit on my part in terms of uh, my dynasty trade targets back in January. Both Drake London and Saquon Barkley were on that list. Um, Difficult and sketchy buying dynasty running backs this time of year, but sometimes it pays off for you. Like it did, it looks like for the uh, for the Saquon uh, dynasty managers. I actually have a shit ton of dynasty exposure to Saquon Barkley, so I feel pretty good about that. Oh yeah, I have a couple shares as well. Funny enough, you actually gave me one of them. Yeah, I did. I did. So um, uh, let's go to Jacobs because uh, Jacobs also a very very fantasy relevant running back. Where did this come from? Uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, I have from? no idea. We knew <laughs> we knew Green Bay was in the market for a new running back. Back mid-season, they were reportedly offering stuff for Derrick Henry at the trade deadline. And we didn't exactly know, you know, how are they going to just draft somebody? We've been penciling Jonathan Brooks to the Packers for like three months now because he's an Aaron Jones clone. Um, but they go out and they spend pretty sizable money going out and getting Josh Jacobs uh, and bringing him in to be their lead back uh, at first. Everybody's like, Oh God, how are they going to use Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs? A uh, couple minutes before we went live here, it's been announced that Aaron Jones is going, uh, is going to be released by the green Bay Packers. So this, it looks like it will be Josh Jacobs workhorse RB one season. AJ Dillon's a UFA. Aaron Where's Jones go? got, uh, got released. I mean, we, we got Jacobs in this offense with this quarterback, this young weapons group, they can afford, to spend money on a running back because they don't have anybody making big money on their offense. Their quarterbacks on his rookie deal, their wide receiver core is all like third year or younger. And they got two rookie tight ends last year. So, I mean, and they also just released Bakhtiari on their offensive line, who was eating up a big portion of their salary cap. So, I mean, they got to do some work up front, I think, because Jacobs probably needs a little bit better of a line to run behind, but I actually really, really like this. If you have Josh Jacobs in dynasty too, like it's great that Aaron Jones got released. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, that and not to mention uh, being attached now to Jordan Love, who showed the uh, the level of upside that he showed at the end of the season, particularly in the playoff game against the Cowboys. You have an offense that projecting forward. I mean, I, I get there's a lot more uncertainty with it compared to maybe some of the other offenses like, you know, the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Bills, the Chiefs. But I mean, I could really see the Packers vaulting themselves up to that upper echelon top tier offense, not to mention the run scheme that he is with, with that, uh, with that Matt LaFleur scheme there. So, I mean, with Josh Jacobs, if he's penciled in for 20, 22 opportunities per game on that Packers team, I think he's got a pretty solid projection as a mid-range RB1. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, we were talking about redraft projection with Saquon, too. I, I don't think that Jacobs will be that far behind him, to be honest. Wherever Saquon's going, I, I'd imagine Jacobs will probably be going a few picks after. So if yeah. Saquon's the 14th player off the board or the 13th player off the board, Jacobs will probably be a mid-second rounder, if I had to guess. Agreed. I mean, yeah. It, 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 could you imagine starting your team? Because obviously, these running backs are going to be propped up now, knowing the landscape of the position and being able to project, you know, volume across the league right now is really at an all-time low. So having backfields where you got a guy like Saquon Barkley, where you got a guy like Josh Jacobs, you don't get many of those. I mean, we saw this year in fantasy that outside of maybe, what, six or seven running backs, the entire landscape was pretty much irrelevant. Yeah, no, literally. Like that, the middle class of the dynasty running back landscape was Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs. Like they were like the only guys that you could say like, hey, one to two year projection for contenders. They're decent. And now they just, they basically just hit the nuts to be honest. Like they, they both just got really, really good landing spots, good contract security. I believe both of them are still very talented players that have one, two more years left in the tank. So got to feel really good. If you, uh, if you bought on them or if you've been holding them for a contender for sure. So definitely, uh, definitely love to see that. Um, I am going to drop something in the chat right now. I am going to make sure that our dynasty rankings uh, are updated today. Our trade value chart, everything, yeah. uh, our regular dynasty rankings on the site, Flock Fantasy, they will be updated today as moves come through. So if you guys want to make sure you get access to those, dynasty rankings will be updated on flockfantasy.com. Make sure you use promo code FSE over there. And of course, you'll get our trade value chart and all that stuff. We do. We did actually record a video earlier today about our uh, picks 109 to 112 rookie draft strategy as well. And of course, our rookie draft um, guide is coming out on the 15th, 50 players deep. It was 30 players deep in the initial release. That's live right now. You can see all the prospect film and all the, uh, or sorry, the prospect player cards and the comparisons and all that kind of stuff. 
live now. And then 20 more players will be coming out on Thursday. And once our 50 players are out, we're going to start doing film breakdowns for the site. Those will be a ton of fun. If you guys want to see us oh, literally yeah. break down Marvin Harrison Jr.'s film or break down Romo Dunze's film, Brock you're going to get to see that. Yeah, Brock Bowers and all these, uh, even more so, I think is more important, us breaking down guys like a Jalen McMillan who are really high on or a Trey Benson who are really high on. Guys like that will be a ton of fun here. Yeah, Toronto Dave hitting us with a uh, with a no flock. And so um, what else do we got? We got, I mean, we got tons of deals here. We got to take Danny down. In the last <laughs> no <really>. shot. <laughs> Both of our best ball leagues, we just have juggernauts. Oh, eh? Like my team's disgustingly broken <laughs> in, in our team in my well, Bush League one. Well, dude, in that league, the Lazar League, I have Lamar, Bijan, Gibbs, Lamb, AJ Brown, Andrews, Pitts, Ridley, Puka, Javante, <laughs> Kyler Murray. Like the team is freaking loaded, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Okay, so we got cousins to Atlanta covered. I mean, Zamir White, just sell them, right? This is your selling window. I'm telling you right now, the Raiders are going to either sign running back help or they're going to draft a running back at some point. So if you think yeah. Samir White's walking in day one of the NFL season as the, the Raiders lead back, you're probably like, that is a, oh. a, ra- a crazy thing to expect. Even if he makes it through free agency in the NFL draft, like that's a, a 1% chance in my opinion. They're going to add somebody who's probably as good, if not better than him. If they don't use their second, let's say fields only cost their third rounder. If they don't use their second rounder on fields, Trey Benson, you are a Las Vegas Raider. Yeah, dude, he literally is totally <laughs> like Jacobs, too. I could oh, totally yeah. see that. I could see them even going, if they want to go cheaper, going after like Ray Davis or Marshawn Lloyd in like round three or four. They both kind of fit the like bruiser kind of um, skill set there. But anyways, uh, the next deal, let's get into, um, what do we want to go? Do you want to go to Tony Pollard? Let's go to Tony go Pollard, Pollard to Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, Tony- just... Talk your shit first. Talk your shit. You Tajay Spears truthers who were just roasting Corey, trying to get out his neck for saying that Spears was overvalued two weeks ago. Where are you at now? Yeah, I mean, I like Tajay Spears. I think he's a great oh, player. Yeah. And honestly, I'm actually, I think he's a buy right now, to be honest, Agreed. after this Tony Pollard signing. But when I talked about him back in January, I was like, hey, make sure you stash Tony Pollard. He's like RB30 in Dynasty right now. He has a chance to be, you know, a high-end back for the the Tennessee Titans. Within two weeks, the guy was all the way up at RB13 in Dynasty, ahead of James Cook, Isaiah Pacheco, Rashad White. Like, he was ahead of these guys. So I'm like, why are we doing this with Tajay Spears when we still have free agency in the NFL draft to go? So what I said on uh, Friday or whatever day I dropped the dynasty sales video was you should probably look to sell Tajay Spears because he's going for late first round picks in a lot of leagues at that point in time. And that mitigates that risk for you. So now we have freaking Tony Pollard in Tennessee. Is Tony Pollard any good still? I don't think so. I mean, he looked pretty washed last year. Maybe he I was just, say, I'll get, I'll get regardless. I, I, I think this is pretty bad news for everybody involved. <laughs> I will give some context to Pollard. So the first seven or eight games, just watching, obviously, as a Cowboys fan, he didn't look like the same player. The juice clearly wasn't there. The explosive runs weren't coming. Around week nine, week 10, we saw a little bit more Tony Pollard. Now, was it objectively worse than last year? Absolutely. But was it a lot better than what we saw from weeks one to weeks eight? Absolutely. So I do think that if the the Panthers, if the Titans value Pollard based off what he showed at the tail end of last season— he could still be a you know low end RB one, high end RB two. I don't necessarily think the ceiling would be there to what we expected from him in Dallas coming into the season. But uh, I mean, like I said, if you can get him like more so as an RB fifteen, RB sixteen at cost, I think he can pay off there. Yeah, I mean the redraft implications of these two guys is going to be really confusing. I think I think you're going to get like dead zone Tony Pollard sixth round pick, fifth round pick maybe, that makes and sense. then Tajay Spears is going to be kind of in that like AJ Dillon range probably for a lot of people where he's like a seventh, eighth, ninth rounder. I think, I mean, regardless of how you slice this, I'm just going to probably take whoever's cheaper. But I do think Spears is a guy that if you're in dynasty leagues right now and everybody's panicking and they're like, Oh God, Tony Pollard got there. He's a big name back. He's been an RB one in the past. And people are going to just like vault Tajay Spears all the way down the dynasty running back rankings. This might present a buying window. If you can get him for the 206 and you're a running back needy team, then I think that's probably a fair price to pay. But Agreed. if you bought him for a first rounder or you were holding on to him with first round value, not hey. great. Definitely yeah. not great. And no flocking, didn't uh, no flocking, no flocking. Didn't you get Nico Collins and a first for Pollard before last season? 
I did, but that was, that was one of the craziest, uh, craziest <laughs> trades that'll age in a long time. So again, a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. I'm still like refreshing Twitter to make sure I'm not missing anything and we don't, but I mean, if, if you guys see a haymaker, you can drop it in the chat oh, yeah. and we'll re react to it live. I mean, I think it's good for Tennessee though, for what it's worth. I think it's good for Will uh, Levis's development that they have two good backs that they can rely on. They need some pass catchers now um, to help uh, Levis be able to throw the ball. I do think we're looking at a, a pretty run heavy situation there, even though um, what's his name is gone. I think that uh, Brian Callahan is probably trying to run the ball. Like, I mean, Brian Callahan's the coach, Bill Callahan's his dad. He's an offensive line guy. They're going to probably Bill Callahan and... in. They that? signed Bill Callahan. Well, Bill Callahan came over with him. Yeah, no, like, that's what I mean. Like, they're going to yeah. probably try and stick to a good run game. I'm sure they're going to go after big name uh, offensive line free agents. Maybe they'd spend the seventh pick in the draft on, on offensive line. I don't know. That's what I'm questioning now. Like obviously the influence both ways, if somebody wants to use a trend one way or another to where the Titans would go in the draft, whether it's wide receiver, or offensive tackle on one side, you could point to, well, in Cincinnati, when faced with that opportunity to bring in Penn Sue or bring in Jamar chase, they ended up going with Jamar chase. But on the other side, I mean, Brian Callahan could just say, well, I brought my dad over He's obviously the best offensive line coach in the business. Why not get an elite, you know, franchise level tackle like a guy like Joe Alt would represent? So I can see them going both ways, especially if it's like neighbors or Odunze versus Alt at the draft. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's uh let's stay at the running back position and talk about the deal that kicked the day off. Let's go to uh, the Chicago Bears signing DeAndre Swift to a three year <laughs> eighty. I think it was three or twenty four. Just twenty four. Tony Pollard's deal. Yeah. Weird move. Weird move. If you're the Bears, I mean, you had two cost-controlled backs that I think were very capable on the roster. 2.5 combined, I think. They're yeah, like Khalil combined. Herbert and Roshan Johnson. Maybe you add one more day three back in the draft. This seemed kind of unnecessary if I was the uh, if I was the Bears. But, I mean, if you're going to bring in a rookie quarterback, having three capable backs is never a bad thing. I just And they have so much cap space, too, that it's like, okay, you, you, they probably weren't even going to spend it all anyway. Um, for me, I just, I, I don't love it for Deandre Swift. I think it would have been way, obviously way better for him to go back to Philadelphia. And now I'm like, is Deandre Swift the third best back on this, on this offense? Like Khalil Herbert was really good last year. He was top five, top 10 graded back by PFF. Roshan Johnson was a prospect. I really loved, and he had good flashes last year. Any one of these three guys could carry the workload. I think this could be a just take them in best ball situation and yeah. I'm going to just do it price based. Like if Swift is a fifth rounder, um, you know, Roshan is a ninth rounder and Herbert's a 12th rounder. I'm going to have a lot of Khalil Herbert and vice versa. Like whoever the pricing ends up is how I'm going to just kind of attack this thing. Uh, Deandre Swift over under RB 20 and a half off the board. I think he'll be lower than that. Cause I think there's lower. more guys that, that people like would be excited about. I think, I think, I mean, both of these guys, Swift and Pollard are going to be the dead zone next year. Yeah. They're going to be the dead zone running backs, whether they're bad or not. Like they're both decent players when they're healthy. It's just like their projection are very, they're, they're very muddy projections. It's like you got young quarterbacks offense. We don't know what to expect out of either one of them. They have capable backs in their backfield that are both, um, you know, all good on all three downs. Like, you know, Pollard's going to lose third down work to Spears and uh, DeAndre Swift is going to lose third down work probably to, to Roshan Johnson or at least be mixed in on those money downs or whatever. But I mean, this is just a weird signing. I It got a gross taste in my mouth from the second free agency started. I was like, oh God, is it going to be one of these days where like all these guys go to like horrible landing spots? But then we got Barkley to the, the Eagles and Jacobs to the Packers and then they cut oh, yeah. Jones. Cousins goes to the Falcons. So it made up for it, but uh, Swift to the, the Bears. I, I really don't know how to feel about this, to be honest. I don't understand why they do it, to be honest. Like, you, you have a cost controlled backfield, I think 2.5 million combined, like I mentioned, for Herbert and for Roshan combined. And then you go out and spend 8 million per year on a guy like DeAndre Swift. Does he even move the needle for them at all? And I know we mentioned, uh, I, I asked you, RB 20 and a half ADP. Let's simplify it then, because we don't know what the rest of the landscape is going to look like. But we, we do know is the certainty of these two landing spots, both running backs. Both making the same amount of money, same amount of term. Tony Pollard or DeAndre Swift next year? Who are you ranking higher? Um, it's an instant gut reaction. Like, obviously, we'll have the offseason to evaluate it, but instant gut reaction where you lean. I think my gut reaction is Pollard only because I think you could maybe explain away his injury last year. And That's also, fair. there's two backs I'm scared of on Chicago and just one on Tennessee with Spears. And Spears 
is a smaller guy and maybe he just works in on third downs or whatever. So, and also too, you don't have a rookie quarterback. Like obviously Caleb Williams, when he goes there is, is going to be way better than Will Levis, but rookie quarterbacks yeah. sometimes have their bumps and bruises. Levis showed a little bit. I, I don't like either of them. Realistically. I think they're both could be dead zone guys that I probably won't want to draft a whole lot of, but uh, I think if I had to choose right now, I would choose Pollard. Both of their dynasty values are God knows where, like, are they 20? I'm getting that term is interesting. Them getting that type of term, I think, uh, at least alleviates their value a little bit. Because Okay, let me ask you off- some questions here. Would you rather have Ramondre Stevenson or either of these backs? Oh, th- I think that's... Like, Ramondre, I, people aren't talking about. I understand that he's an under-the-radar signing, but, I mean, we got to look at the fact that, oh, and there goes my camera. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we'll let, you, we'll let you get that figured out. Anyways, I- I'm just going to work through this by myself here. Ramondre Stevenson, Javante Williams, James Cook... Isaiah Pacheco, like I can't put Swift and Pollard up there given their kind of projections at this point in time. Once you get down to like the David Montgomery, Brian Robinson Jr., you know, Jalen Warren, Najee Harris area, that's like where I have Swift and Pollard before this news. I honestly don't think much changes. I think they're probably back end 20s dynasty running backs. You know, tons of rookies, if they go high, I don't think they will. But if let's say we get four or five running backs that go in the top three rounds of the draft, I think I would maybe take all of them over these guys. Like, uh, it's interesting, man. Like these guys are all Steve. The reason Stevenson is up there is because I think the staff still believes in him, but we'll, we'll talk about the Antonio Gibson signing as well. Um, I could just talk about it right now. Honestly, Antonio Gibson signed with the, uh, the Patriots today. I'm not really sure what the term is. I don't think I've actually seen it yet. Uh, and Xavier McKinney just signed with the green Bay Packers just now as well. Uh, Antonio Gibson, we'll have to see what the contract looks like. I want to actually look it up here um, because I don't actually know how much they gave him. Um, I'd imagine it was probably like a, okay, so it's a three-year, 11.25 million base, 17.5 million max value. Okay, that's that actually is a bigger contract than I thought he would have commanded. Um, so that probably dings Ramondre Stevenson a little bit. Uh, I mean, regardless, man, all these guys, Stevenson, Montgomery, Pollard, Brian Robinson, Swift, um, Jalen Warren, like all, they're all like fragile workload guys and like anything could change in a blink of an eye. So, I mean, the moral of the story is, is if you guys are going to roster running backs in dynasty, go big or go cheap, basically. Like you, you, hopefully you have like Bijan and Gibbs or Bijan and McCaffrey. And then the rest of these deals are all just like, you know, useless to you because the rest of your running backs are made up of like James Connors and Chuba Hubbard types or whatever. Oh, we got people saying some shit in the chat here now. Um, Devin Singletary is going to sign with the Giants, apparently. Um, kind of, okay, whatever. Like, who cares? That's that's my attitude towards that. I mean, Singletary was okay, I guess. Um, last year, he was good in relief of Pierce when he couldn't do anything. We'll have to see what the money looks like. That'll be an interesting one for Singletary because if Singletary got good money from the, the Giants, that would be really, really wild if he was like the lead back there. But um, regardless, the, the, the running back landscape is getting shook up in a major way. Someone's Michael saying Henry to the Texans. I don't see any, really? I don't see any confirmed stuff there. Um, so I'm not going to react to that one yet. Why did Singletary go to the giants? I don't know, dude. Um, that's, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Pierce owner. So you're saying there's a chance. Wait, is this real? What somebody were you tweeted out, Somebody tweeted out. I'm hearing fields to the Raiders is close to happening. Oh, really? That's what it was tweeted by uh, C. McRae, chief recruiting writer for... Okay. Fair. I guess he's a recruiting analyst. I don't know, but he said it's close to happening. I don't know how... Z- how Xavier how McKinney getting four-year 68 is good for the safety market because I, uh, I want to see all these safeties start to go off the board, and I think McKinney was one of the top guys, and I want Jordan Whitehead back in Tampa Bay. So, How's he available, McKinney? They caught him today. Or they um they didn't uh, pick up his option or whatever the the thing w- that they needed to do. So wait, is is they didn't tag him? If that's what you thought, he got tagged. Oh he tagged. shit! Wait, they didn't accept his fifth year option. Okay, I just realized that. Well, that's why. No, he wasn't a first round pick. I don't think. Oh, it was no. Oh no, no, I think he was a second rounder. No, you're right. You're right. Why did I think he was a first rounder? Fuck. Anyway, what safety went in the first here. round? What safety went in the first round of that year? Um, did none go? Oh, right, because Delpit, him, and uh, Winfield all fell to the second round. Remember that? Yeah, but I think somebody went in the first round. I can't remember who it was, though. Fair. 2020, right? Yeah. Anyways, we'll, we'll look yeah. at that after. Um, yeah. Anything on Gibson? I was talking about the Gibson signing a little bit. Do you have well, anything that's on Gibson? What, 
Well, actually, that's what I was saying before my camera cut. By the way, I had the bad battery in. No, no, no kidding, right? With yeah. Antonio Gibson, the main allure of a guy like Ramondre Stevenson was the overall level of workload. It was the receiving work that he was given. The Pat signing a back like Antonio Gibson, like they could have brought in another power style back like they did with Damian Harris last year to maybe take some between the tackles work. But if Antonio Gibson is brought in to be a receiving back, that's not good for Ramondre Stevenson because that was a huge part of his game, being able to bank on 100 plus targets on a year to year basis. So in terms of the overall landscape between him, between Swift, between Pollard, they're kind of a range of running back and dynasty that I just don't want to touch. Okay, so let me ask you this. Like, if you had to pick one, would you rather Ramondre Stevenson or David Montgomery? You kind of know Montgomery's role, even though he's a little bit older than Stevenson. Monty. Monty. Yeah, I think I would prefer Montgomery as well. I think Ramondre's going to move down a tier for me. Um, I had him in that tier with, like, Javante Williams, James Cook, Isaiah Pacheco, kind of on the basis that he would get a pretty good, con or a pretty good um, you know, workload next year. And I, that's definitely not a confirmed thing right now. I think he could be a buy low, potentially, dep depending on how people react to that. Like, I feel like... Three years, 16-5 for Devin Singletary. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing, dude? What That's are we doing? Horrible. That is horrid, dude. Giants, Giants gonna giant, man. I don't know what is going on. How do you how do you give the Devin Singletary that deal when you could literally just sign a running back? Like, are they they're not even contending? Like, why are they signing a running back? <laughs> I dude, I they think they're contending though. Like they they're gonna go like, oh, we made the playoffs two years ago with like a terrible roster. <laughs> Yeah, now we got our mid quarterback coming off an ACL tear. Let's go Dude, all in. <laughs> if I were the Giants, I would like try and trade Daniel Jones. Nobody's going to want him, but like try and Nobody. trade him, see what you can do, and go up for a quarterback or yeah. draft a receiver and draft a quarterback next year or something. Like, if the, okay, the only issue that I see is maybe it's possible with New England at three not wanting a quarterback and wanting to trade down, but. Like Washington's got to take a quarterback and obviously the bears are going to take a quarterback, especially if they trade away Justin field. So we're kind of at a point where like, are the top quarterbacks even attainable? And if so, like who's going to be left, is it going to be Jaden Daniels? Is it going to be Drake may falling or better yet? Maybe they prefer JJ McCarthy to one of those two. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Um, I think with Singletary, like I don't even know how to react to like hit. If you have Singletary on your team, like definitely try and sell him. Cause he's not yeah. that good, but Devin Singletary, like low key, I could totally see the Giants be the team that like drafts Jonathan Brooks, for example, and they use Singletary in relief of Jonathan Brooks until Brooks comes back from his ACL tear. That I actually think is a pretty decent, you know, long term strategy yeah. at running back. Would three I have years, given though. Singletary a three year contract? Absolutely <laughs> not. If they'd signed him for one year, five million, that would have made a little bit more sense. But Fuck, I mean, regardless, by I eleven. Good. If you have Singletary, you're probably happy about this. That is more money than I thought he was going to get. Like even if it was two years, seven million with maybe seven or eight million of that guaranteed in year one, like that. Okay, I can convince myself of that because then, oh, cool, we got Jonathan Brooks. He's recovered from the ACL. Guess what? We're only due Devin Singletary two million next year, and we can get out of that. Like, uh, by, yeah, by I mean, and everyone's saying like three years doesn't mean three years. Like, obviously, Fair. it just still like I mean, even giving him a two year contract with guarantees in two. Years. Giants are also horrible at structuring contracts, so I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them to put guaranteed money in the third year of that deal. Sinister. Anyways, um, should we talk about some of the wide receiver stuff? Because we did have a couple wide receivers sign some deals here. Um, the biggest one I think was Gabe Davis, right? Is Gabe Davis the biggest domino off the board at wide receiver? I guess like I mean, Pittman and Pittman and Evans already re-signed yeah. with their teams, and T. Higgins requested a trade. Um, but he did get franchise tagged by the Bengals, so he's not going anywhere as of now. I think Gabe Davis signing what was it a thir a three year thir uh, thirty nine million with the uh, with the Jacksonville yeah. Jaguars was up the deal? to up to Philly million uh, up to fifty million with incentives, I believe. Yeah, so I mean, Gabe Davis goes from being the deep threat from one big armed quarterback to another. Um, does this preclude the dra the Jaguars from drafting a receiver in the first round? It shouldn't. Does it, it preclude them from getting Calvin Ridley again? Yes, I think. Yeah, I think. I, they I, make I this think so. I think that's yeah. definitely Chooks Akora for to the Patriots. Okay, that's that's a nice little signing. The Steelers O lineman, right? I believe so. Yeah. For a second, I thought it was Ch um, what's him call it? Chooks, Chuma Doka uh, Akonkwo. Is what I oh. thought it was for a second. I'm like, oh, did he get traded or something? Man. Wait, what happened? Yeah, so, okay. Gabriel Davis going to the Jaguars. Again, if you have Gabriel Davis in Dynasty, I would feel okay about it. I think Sell him. it's good news for Trevor Lawrence to some degree, too. You got a couple big plays out of Gabe Davis. I think that was something that their offense was actually missing because Ridley was supposed to play that role. And whenever Zay Jones was out of the lineup, 
they didn't really have any big play element. It was like check downs over the middle to ETN, Christian Kirk, and, and Evan Ingram. They didn't really have a big play element. So I actually kind of low-key like the Gabe Davis um, signing. Uh, I wouldn't have given him. I mean, that's not bad. That's not terrible money for like a third receiver, to be honest. If you draft, who's the perfect draft fit now? Because that's the Brian Thomas role now. So I, yeah. I think that takes them kind of out of Brian Thomas Jr. area. If that's, you know what who I mean? Who would they go with? Yeah, who would they go with? That's what I'm thinking. Like, are they going to want, you know, maybe trying to develop Adonai Mitchell into a number one receiver? Are they going to want see that. Xavier Worthy potentially as like a design touches, also a deep threat kind of guy? Do they want to grab? I mean, I don't think Keon Coleman's going to be a first rounder anymore. This would be interesting. I mean, I guess if you view Thomas as a number one go-to X receiver, you could still talk yourself into that. Yeah. Um, this does take them out of the wide receiver market, at least in round one. Maybe they go with like an interior lineman or a corner or something like that. And then in round two, they come back and they add Jalen Polk or something. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good pickup. I mean, I mean, funny enough, maybe an Xavier Leggett would fit there. Yeah, Xavier, like, I don't think he's going to go in round one. I could see him going. In no, round I mean, two. round two and round two, uh, round yeah. one. I don't think he'll go, but like that could be their target in round two. You sign Gabe Davis, so you don't have to take a wide receiver in round one. You go after a guy like Xavier Leggett, who maybe shouldn't uh, get counted upon right away. And you have guys like Kirk, you have guys like Davis, obviously Evan Ingram to take away, you know, the short term role uh, of priority targets for Trevor Lawrence. But when Xavier Leggett eventually develops 225 pound rocks receiver that can work downfield the way he does, that's an element that Trevor Lawrence needs in this offense. That dynamic. This is threat. my first thought as well. Gavin yeah. says Christian Kirk to the moon. This was my first thought Absolutely. as well. And um, I like just to give you guys an idea. I, I did the sells video last week. I was going to do the buys video today. And then I realized I'm like, oh, free agency starts today. This is totally useless for me to like, I'll wait until after free agency yeah. is over. And then I'll talk about some buys uh, in dynasty. Man, Christian Kirk, if people don't realize quickly that he's going to get a lot of targets, I am going to be buying and sending out some offers for Christian Kirk oh, because, yeah. dude, he might be like a PPR top 20 receiver lock. Could be, man. I mean, Calvin Ridley, obviously, although he wasn't that productive last year, he was commanding a ton of targets across the season. So getting a guy like Gabe Davis, who realistically, what's your target per game outlook for a guy like Gabe Davis this year? Are you going to like five, five and a half targets per game? Yeah, probably. Does he cross 100? Gabe yeah, Davis? probably just about that. I mean, it'll all depend. If they draft a first-round receiver in addition to that, that's going to hurt the outlook a little oh, bit. But sure. I actually, I think why they made this move is because they want to go corner or interior line in the first round. And they, they'll they they'll add probably another receiver at some point. Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan, Troy Franklin maybe falls to the second round. Xavier Leggett maybe in the second round. Leggett would be fun. I think Leggett in round two would be a lot of fun for them. Um, But yeah, yeah I, actually, I actually do think they're going to be comfortable knowing that they paid Evan Ingram, knowing that Christian Kirk's on a big contract, Gabe Davis now under contract. I think they're going to be comfortable going with a day two wide receiver as opposed to a day one wide receiver. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, is there anything else that I'm forgetting here? Is there any big moves that we haven't talked about yet? I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't know. I don't actually think the Henry to the Texans thing was real. Well, um, I mean, in terms of people that are still out there, there's still a lot of, I mean, Justin Fields is the big domino that people are talking about. Uh, in the chat right now. Where do you think he goes? Like, what's up? G guess right now. You have to, you, you know, you have to make a choice. Where do you think he ends up going? Where do you think he ends up getting traded to today? Who do you pick? He's going to an AFC West team. I got the Raiders. Either the Broncos or the Raiders would be my guess. I got the Raiders. Yeah, I think, I mean, Luke Getzey's there. Is that a positive or a negative? I have no idea. But uh, I could see both of those teams being interested in Justin Fields. I don't think he really fits Sean Payton's offense, so I'm not really sure how that would work. Um, but the Raiders, I think, are the most logical landing spot, at least at this point in time. Yeah, and I mean, like, maybe you can say don't rule out a team like the Patriots because hypothetically, let's just say they're in love with two quarterbacks in this class. Both of them are projected to go top two, and they know that ahead of the draft. I can see them making maybe making a splash, especially if the Justin Fields cost gets depreciated. Maybe the Fields cost ends up being an early third-round pick, and then at that point, you're the Patriots. You can convince yourself, I'm going to take Justin Fields. I'm going to get you know the OSU alum, alum there with Marvin Harrison Jr. slash trade down, and then you're able to attack a second-round pick maybe on defense now too. Yeah, I think – when Justin Fields gets traded is also something I struggle yeah. with. Like, is it going to happen today? Is it going to happen a few days from now? Is it going to happen on draft night? Is it going to happen after Caleb Williams is already a Chicago bear? Like I, I really struggle with what's going to happen. Cause I do think that, you know, a team like Minnesota, for example, might be in on Justin Fields. If they can't get up, 
or a team like, you know, whatever else, like C- Seattle potentially, like maybe they're interested in maybe moving up for a quarterback if if McCarthy falls far enough or if May starts to slide a little bit. So I think some of these quarterback needy teams might actually wait until draft night and be like, hey, you know, if we don't get the guy that we're going after, we'll actually trade you our 2025 second rounder for Justin Fields or whatever pick uh, compensation. Like an incentive later one. Like maybe you do, hey, like we'll give you a three, but if he starts 10 plus games for us next year, it becomes a two or something like that. Or like, oh, if we re-sign him past this year, it can become a two. Like they can have that type of incentive built in. I mean, look at like what they did with Calvin Ridley, the Falcons did with Calvin Ridley. Yeah, Uh, that's the perfect trade package, honestly. Like I think that's, you're you're getting the upside if you're trading Justin Fields away that that pick becomes a second rounder, but you're also probably, like he's probably worth a third. Like I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's definitely worth more than that. It sounds like that's probably about what he's worth on the open market right now. Um. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a number of teams that could entertain that. Like, it could also be these teams with older starters, like the Jets and the Rams and and guys like that that end up going after Justin Fields. I just think that it's probably, there's there's a lot of chairs to fill, musical chairs-wise, at quarterback. And with Russ going to the Steelers, I don't know if that's official yet, but I, I'd imagine that's going to happen. And, like, you know, Cousins being out of the market now, uh, going to the Falcons, there's a, a couple teams that are in pretty desperate need of a quarterback that are not really in range to draft one, like the Vikings, the Broncos, and the um, Raiders. Yeah, sorry, I had to address this one because uh, this is really hilarious considering the fact that how many teams that needed a quarterback last year passed on the opportunity to trade for a guy like Lamar Jackson when he was available, and now we're seeing panic. Like, I'm sorry for you guys, like three by 100 defense up being like that. Would you have rather had a guy like Lamar Jackson? Absolutely. Kirk Cousins, you're signing him for $45 million a deal, uh, a year, sorry. Would you have rather had Lamar Jackson? Absolutely. So it's kind of funny now that teams are willing to pay quarterbacks now, but when an MVP, literally these, this past year's MVP was available to trade, no team actually took the bait. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, they would have had to give up. Do you I think, think collusion was involved? Do you think collusion was involved? Like basically like, hey, like uh, around the league, if we do this, this is going to overinflate the quarterback market. Like what, do you think there was behind the scenes factors there? I don't think that would factor in, Fair? to be honest. Was there, okay, like, is there any other fantasy relevant moves that that I, I forgot about? Anybody? I guess Russell Wilson, we haven't talked about. Um, He goes back or he goes to the Steelers. I, stock up for George Pickens. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Sutton was the guy that was, um, you know, uh, the red zone threat for the Broncos last year when he scored like 11 touchdowns or something like that. I can't remember how many Sutton scored, but Pickens definitely would probably make sense. I guess, yeah, we haven't talked about Jerry Judy to Cleveland either. Yeah, Jerry Judy to Cleveland. Thoughts on it? I mean, uh, I've already kind of given up the sales on a guy like Elijah Moore, unfortunately. Like, if, if you're not doing it by now, like, probably not going to do it. So Elijah Moore, obviously now even harder path to eventually pay off. Amari Cooper is the one I'm really interested in here. Cause I still think he is the most talented wide receiver on this team. So if he comes oh. at a discount now, because people are talking about Judy, people are talking about Elijah Moore. I I'm willing to soak up Amari Cooper. Where do you think Amari Cooper's ADP ends up falling? I think he's probably going to go exactly where he was going last year, like third, fourth round. Yeah, if he falls to the fourth, I'm I'm really interested. Third, that's about where I'd value him. But if he falls anywhere in the fourth, like we've still seen the spike week potential. And I mean, you still got to buy it in the fact that maybe Deshaun Watson, uh, like there's risk levels in him getting back to that level of performance. But um, if Amari Cooper pays off, I still think he's by far the most talented player on that team in terms of the wide receiver core. And apparently everybody's talking about Gus Edwards going to the LA Chargers. So I will shut my app off. I will shut yeah, my app. That's Gus. such a Jim Harbaugh thing to do. Sign a freaking uh, tone setter running back. Um, Let's go. Ew. Like, ew. Like, what What are we doing here? Gus Edwards to the Chargers, dude? Like, this is this is crazy. Back with Roman. I, Back with Greg. Yeah. Greg. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think of that. This I guy. Think- that makes it more likely that that Derrick Henry is going to go to the Ravens, in my opinion, though, if Gus Edwards is off the market or the now. Texans. Yeah, I, I think I think I think Henry's a Raven, dude. I can just totally see that. Yeah, that's respectable. D- Danny is fluent in Japanese. <laughs> I'm I'm too busy yapping about Amari Cooper's ADP and everybody's just like, yeah, shut up. Gus Bus went to the Chargers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we could just talk about all this stuff at once, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Like Jerry Judy going to the Browns. Call me crazy, but I actually think the risk is worth the reward a little bit on Jerry Judy. I think in basketball, you can get maybe. him for like a late second rounder right now, and I would absolutely take that. I think for 
Like I get, I, I get it. Just re-roll Jerry Judy into somebody else. But like, the guy had like 900 yards and like six touchdowns, like two years ago, man. Like he might be just a complete knucklehead. And I'm, I'm very anti knucklehead wide receiver. Uh, generally speaking, don't but do it, Bush. don't do it. Bush. I, I don't know, man. Don't Ju- do it. Bush. There's something about Judy. I that was I'm the like, Judy guy. I was the Judy guy. Don't do it. <laughs> it's funny. Cause in our risk ratings last year, what did I say about Jerry Judy? He was either going to fucking stink or blow the league to shreds. And he fucking stunk. So he did stink. I mean, it's weird. Uh, I, I don't know what to do with Jerry Judy. Honestly, I, I tweeted it Best out ball. yesterday. The Browns offense is the all upside, no floor offense. It's like Deshaun Watson, all upside, no floor. Nick Chubb coming off of an ACL tear, all upside, no floor. Uh, Elijah Moore, Amari Cooper on a game to game basis. Jerry Judy, um, David and Joku, even like all these guys are just upside plays out the ass. Yeah. I mean, like, like I kind of mentioned, I don't want to roster them in dynasty. I don't want to roster them in redraft lineup leagues. The place I'm targeting these Browns players is in freaking best ball, especially if Deshaun Watson's going to fall at ADP. I can get, you know, maybe Amari Cooper in the fourth round, David and Joku in round eight, and then tail it off with one of Jerry Judy in the like 11th, 10th, or a guy like Elijah Moore is probably going to be in the 14th next year. So I can see that being an affordable stack, especially with the fact that Deshaun Watson over under round 14 and a half. I yeah, think I bet he'll be like the quarterback 22 in ADP. I agree. Honest. Like he's not going to be, he's not going to be overly exciting. I think good cheap um, stack though. Good yeah. Stack. Yeah. It's going to be an affordable stack. Unfortunately, I hope I don't default to it. Cause you know how sometimes there's like an affordable probably stack will. that you just default yeah. to. I really hope I'm not falling too much into the Cleveland Browns <laughs> trap. Um, just like the Jets trap a couple the, years ago from us. Yeah. Let's talk about the guys that, that resigned because their dynasty yeah. values are obviously on the rise. Um, Michael Pittman Jr. I mean, I think we kind of expected this. I expected this, him re-signing with the Indianapolis Colts. Um, are you worried that he's going to be not as good with Anthony Richardson? Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to think that. Now, in terms of the ceiling he showed with Gardner Minshew last year, do I expect that from him with Anthony Richardson? Not necessarily, because we saw insane levels of volume with, with Gardner Minshew. We saw him be legitimately a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy down the stretch last year when Gardner Minshew was the quarterback. However, you're not paying top 10 wide receiver and fantasy type of price tags for him. In redraft, I'm expecting this guy probably a fringe top 15 to 18 ranked wide receivers where he probably follows himself, maybe a fourth round pick. I think honestly him and Romari Cooper may be valued similarly in terms of where can we expect them in terms of redraft next year. In terms of dynasty, like if you're buying him, I can expect him to be maybe a wide receiver 21 price tag in Dynasty, a wide receiver 22 around the guys like Tank Dell, around the guys like Rasheed Rice, Jordan Addison. That's about where I see him filing in. I don't know, man. It just depends what the cost is for him. If you're still expecting to pay maybe somebody who's selling him, you know, what he was showing last year, top 10 level price tags, I'm gearing away. But if it's more so an affordable wide receiver too, we've seen him command volume. We've seen him being a consistent wide receiver in fantasy. Even when Anthony Richardson was healthy last year, the volume wasn't quite the same, but he was still really good when Anthony Richardson was healthy. Yeah, I think we talked about it on the video we recorded earlier today. It's like if you're a contender, you yeah. lost in the championship last year and you could send your 111 in 2024 for Michael yeah. Pittman Jr. It's like, yeah, you, you should definitely do that, um, especially knowing the um, the liquidity and the production value that you're getting. And yes, uh, listen to Kurt here. He says, thumbs up, baby. Let's get some more likes, people. Again, 861 uh, sure you- concurrent. Yeah, we, we, this might be the most people we've ever had in a live stream. Oh, yeah. and it's happening in the middle of March, which is pretty crazy. So I uh, really appreciate you guys for supporting us here. Um, T Higgins, I think this is one that we really, really need to talk about. He requested a trade. I'm assuming it's because he wants an extension. I don't think it has anything else to do with anything other than get the guy his money. This is going to do one of two things, in my opinion. It's either going to get him extended by Cincinnati or it's going to get him traded. Which one do you think is more likely? I think he's back, to be honest. Like, I think he does play out this year, but this kind of confirms like, hey, like I want an extension. Like, I... It's tough, man. Like, I don't think you can let that guy go unless the trade package you get back is at least a top 40 pick. And at this point, it's like, if you're Carolina, maybe I can see them throwing the 33rd pick at him. Maybe a team like the New York Giants say they want to go up for a quarterback from six overall, have that second round pick to be able to add a guy like T. Higgins uh, to trade for. I think that would be a really good addition for them. But realistically, like, 
How many options do you realistically have that have a top 40 pick? Maybe three or four? Tennessee also has a top 40 Tennessee. pick, and they yep. obviously coached him with Brian Callahan yep. there. That I think Tennessee actually makes the most sense of any All of the one spot. Pick two. But Carolina does too because of the, uh, yep. the fact that he played at Clemson. And also the Jags make some sense too with Trevor Lawrence there. They have a mid-second round pick if they don't re-sign. That's what I would do, dude. Jeez, you signed Gabe David. I guess you probably can't afford to pay three wide receivers though because the yeah. second you trade for Higgins, you got to extend him. Are you going to be on the books for Christian 20. Kirk, Gabe Davis, and T. Higgins? Like, I think going young is probably the better option for for Jacksonville. What do you think um, T. Higgins ends up going for APY? In terms of his deal? Yeah. Um, I think he'll get anywhere between 25 and 28. Basically what, what Evans and, and Pittman signed for probably is I was, exactly what he'll get. Funny enough, I was going to say over under 27 and a half. So that's right about the range I mentioned. I think 27 and a half is exactly what Pittman got. No, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, let me look up the contract details. But like regardless, I think he's going to get he's going to get an extension out of this, whether it's from Cincinnati or it's from a different team. I'm praying it's from Cincinnati cuz I mean, I think that's his best place to be, to be um, honest. I know it would be great if he was a number 1 for some team in Tennessee or in, you know, Carolina or whatever, but I actually still prefer him to stay in Cincinnati if I'm a T Higgins manager. Uh so Michael Pittman 3 by 71.5 with 46 guaranteed. So you're looking at there, what what would that be? Oh, I got uh, a calculator here. 27.23.75, actually. Wow. He took a hometown discount, I think. Fair. Oh, right, yeah. Like, Evans got 26 yeah. per. He got 26 per, because it was a two-year 52, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that that's a good value for the Colts. I'm not going to lie. Good yeah, really good value for, for the Colts. Yeah, no fair play. Yeah, hell of a value. Any, any I mean... Other, what other significant deals have there been? I think that's basically been it. I mean, we haven't talked about Mike Evans' deal yet. Um, oh, right. He's going to retire a buck, to be honest. Like, he actually came out and said that he wants to play more than two years. Um, I mean, his game has aged pretty well so far. It could age poorly, though. You know, the type of receiver he is might age like Julio Jones's game or something like that. But, um, yeah, as long as Mike Evans is in Tampa Bay, he's probably going to be a top. Like, where is he going to go in redraft leagues? Like, early third round, like he always is going? Probably like a fringe top 15 guy, I would say. Around there, he's got he's gonna go through. what 303 like he does every single year, I mean, though, like in terms of ADP, like where he's gonna go. I mean, we'll, we'll find out in a little bit, yeah, exactly. Um, so we might, we might, we've been going long on this one. We talked about all the uh free agency deals. I think we should, uh, we should save that for maybe tomorrow or for Wednesday. Oh, okay, I think that's probably a better idea just because yeah. I actually I think we've covered these deals well, pretty well, and I think this is a good rewatch for a lot of people. You want to just go back live at five then? <laughs> we could. We definitely could. Let's do it. Um I'm down. We Yeah, no, no, no. Let's let's save it for tomorrow. We still got some work right, to do fair. on the draft guide and stuff. No need to double upload in one day here. Um right. we have a couple questions here. I'm I, like I'm sorry I'm not going in order here, but I, I just like see some questions that are interesting here. Uh can I consider London as my new wide receiver one? Do I still need to attack for a wide receiver one if that's my biggest hole? Smith. So Devonte, JSN, and London top three. I have the one oh two. I mean London's I would, your one out of those three. Yeah, London is your one. But like, I'm still probably going to draft Marvin anyway. <laughs> oh, easily, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Let, uh, hypothetically, I think this that's is... what he's asking. Like, should I draft Marvin still so, now that London is better? I mean, yes. Like, unless you're like desperate for a quarterback, let's just say hypothetically, your room is Kirk Cousins, Geno Smith, and nobody else. If that's your quarterback room, uh, uh, like maybe you consider taking a quarterback at that spot. But I mean, for me personally, like. I don't know if I could pass on Marvin and that's really the only scenario where I would even consider about passing on Marvin. And even in that scenario, like we talked about in the pick strategy video, can you trade down from one Oh two to the one Oh four and get more picks on top of that? Can you go from the one Oh two to the one Oh four, pick up a 2025 first at that point, you end up cashing in Marvin Harrison jr. To the other owner, you end up getting a guy like maybe Drake may or Jane Daniels plus an extra first round pick. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that makes a lot of sense. We also, we haven't actually talked about JSN uh, since the Tyler Lockett, um, uh, re-signing and restructure. So, I mean, again, everybody talked a lot of shit about me in that, in that sales video last week, when I said that JSN was a sell. And the reason I said JSN was a sell was because he had an equal range of outcomes. He has had a disappointing rookie season. It hasn't translated what we saw from him, his, uh, second year, his sophomore year at Ohio state, when he was on the field with Wilson and Olave and those guys. But at the same time, he was a good prospect, and there's reasons for optimism. Only now, Tyler Lockett is back with Seattle. So if 
if your thesis was he was bad his rookie season because he was caught behind DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, you that can't still exists. turn around now and say that he's still going to be fine because the same guy that was holding him back his rookie season is now back. Yeah, no, it actually is really funny. Um, when I'm looking at this situation, people were so quick to dismiss what happened with JSN and make excuses for what happens with JSN. You can't have it both ways, man. You can't say that JSN shouldn't have been expected to produce in year one, but then also went around and took him into the fifth round of underdog fantasy drafts. Like that just can't coexist here. It's either he was a fifth round valuable pick that could still coexist with both Metcalf and Lockett, or it was maybe we should have been an 11th or 12th round pick because of Metcalf and Lockett. You can't have it both ways here. He can't be dis or he has to be disappointing if you're valuing him as a fifth round pick. If he was an 11th or 12th and did what he did, that's another whole story. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, JSN's value hasn't changed. I looked at keep trade cut today and he was wide receiver 26 today and he was wide receiver 26 before. So, I mean, like, I kind of like it to be honest that JSN yeah. has Lockett there in house because realistically, like I know Lockett's a good wide receiver and this is good for his dynasty value. He's still going to be a great contending flex player yeah. or whatever. If JSN is the guy that we thought JSN was, he'll beat out Tyler Lockett next year. Like that's, I'm not really worried. He'll start to command targets, but now you have this insulation that like, because Lockett's back, you can maybe get a slight discount on JSN or if you're holding him or whatever, like, the only thing that sucks is if you're holding JSN. That's the only people that are lo are, are lost here. Or if you bought JSN after his rookie season for like a big time, you know, you traded the one of six or something for JSN because you believe that much in the talent. So those people definitely lost in the deal. But for me, I have zero JSN dynasty share, zero. And I have one. I might actually, I might actually go and buy him now because I think that this is a point in time where I'm okay with the risk undergoing that. I'm buying into the prospect profile and kind of the flashes that we saw from him. And now I'm getting this like nice little discount because Tyler Lockett is still there, but I actually don't view Tyler Lockett as somebody that precludes JSN. If he's the player, I think he is from actually breaking out at the, uh, in the NFL. So for me, roundabout way of saying that, like if you held JSN or if you bought JSN before this, probably bad news for you, but I actually think it might open a slight buying window, but that all that being said, there is still JSN truthers out there. Definitely so nice. it's possible that if JSN truther has JSN on his team, He's not going to give him up for anything less than like a top seven or eight rookie pick this year. And I would prefer the rookie pick to yeah. JSN. Okay. So uh, you have to make these choices right now. We'll, we'll play some JSN, you know, pick the rank for him. JSN or T Higgins? Oh, Higgins, not even close. JSN or Lad McConkey? So Lad McConkey, I believe, is my 110 in rookie drafts, if I'm not mistaken, right now, or my 111, actually. Sorry, because I have uh, JJ at 110. I would take JSN over Lad McConkey. I think JSN or Adnay Mitchell. So you have, you JSN. have Lad over. Yeah. You have JSN. Lad over Adnay. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. JSN or George Pickens. JSN. JSN or Debo. It's probably dependent on the team I would say, but I would still probably take JSN. I think where JSN becomes like the best option is once you get outside of Top you know the area easily. where you're talking about like Pittman and Zay flowers and like, yeah, yeah. I, here's a real conversation now without Kirk Cousins, Jordan Addison or JSN? Jordan Addison still. Still? You're still taking yeah. Addison over JSN without uh without yeah. Cousins? I was baking in Cousins Cousins ranking uh leaving to my Addison ranking already. Addison is my wide receiver 22. Now, do you move Addison? Let me ask you that question. Does Addison move at all? Yeah, I think I, I mean, had like, Tank Dell behind Addison. So, I'm definitely moving him down one spot at least. Yeah, and I'll probably... Okay, so I had Flowers one spot behind him. I think I got to move him below Flowers. Him versus Tiggins, uh, Tiggins. Him versus T. Higgins versus Brian Thomas, I think is going to be the debate for me. I, I honestly... Yeah. I think I got to move him below T. Higgins and Brian Thomas. T. Higgins, obviously, because he's either going to get a big deal or going to get traded. Brian Thomas, because, I mean, the buzz now is he's going to be a top 15 overall pick. So I think yeah, wide I mean, receiver I thought Addison was, was a better spot. prospect than Thomas, and he proved and a lot fair. in year one. So I, I prefer Addison still, but... So I had the quarterback Addison here. at 21 before this. I have him at 24 now. I have Tank Dell, Pittman, and Zay Flowers moved ahead of him now. JSN. O Addison. Over Addison. Over Addison. JSN I, I had at 26, and he's staying at 26. I don't really view anything differently, to be honest. Addison, Addison I have at 25. JSN I have at 28. Yeah. For reference. Yeah, a lot of people saying Jaden Reed over Addison. Can't go that far. 
I can't I can't go that far either. I like Jaden Reed. I really, really I like Jaden Reed. Don't get me wrong, but he's I, I, I prefer you, Addison still. You get offered the 112 right now straight up for Jaden Reed. Which side are you taking? So for me, the 112 in my rankings is Trey Benson, I think. Yeah. Um, but if I went at wide receiver, I technically have Jaden Reed ahead of Adonai Mitchell, who is my one, but, uh, who is my next rated receiver. So the better question is the asset of the 112, knowing that you have the flexibility to either attack running back or wide receiver, whereas you're pigeonholed into a wide receiver three type of archetype with Jaden Reed. Would you want the flexibility of the 112 over Jaden Reed right now, even knowing that you might let, uh, end up with a slightly inferior wide receiver, whether that's Adonai Mitchell or whether that's whatever wide receiver you take at that pick? It would, it would depend on my team. Cause if I have like Jane sure. Reed as my wide receiver five or six on my roster and I could just re-roll into Adonai Mitchell has a higher ceiling anyway, I would probably do it. Yeah, no, and that's kind of where I'm at with it. Jaden Reed right now, I think he's a really interesting profile, but if I can get first round liquidity for him, I'm going to do it just simply for the aspect that I don't have to pigeonhole that to a wide receiver, especially given the context of my teams, Jaden Reed on a competitive team is what a wide receiver four or five. Yeah, probably. probably closer to a five. So at that yeah. point, it's like if I have four better wide receivers and I can take Jaden Reed and get a, a, a more versatile asset, whether that's, I don't know, a quarterback ends up being at that spot or the RB one or two ends up being at that spot. I think I would do that as well. Yeah, yeah exa I mean, exactly it, what Mr. said. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Reed is the it, his tough because he's a talented player. He's a versatile player. He's a guy that you obviously hit on if you spent like the 207 on him yeah. last year. But it's like his accumulation of value, I believe, is is capped at like a back end first round caliber asset. And that's even if he goes out next year and has like another breakout season, I think we're still looking at like a guy who's worth a back end first. So if you can re-roll him into somebody who has the chance to upgrade into that and better yet, what I would do with Jaden Reed is take Jaden Reed plus another asset and go after a better wide receiver. I think that's even better um, yeah. because then you can, you can just straight up buy a better wide receiver. You like, I mean, before this, maybe not now before this, you probably could have taken Jaden Reed in a second and bought Drake London with it. So, so then uh, I guess another question I have is which asset do you think nets you more on the marker right now? If you were to uh, plug in a 112 in a, in a trade package or Jaden Reed? I think the 112 would net you more on the open market. I think I agree. Slightly, like I, I, slightly. Yeah. but I think there's definitely people out there that really like Jaden Reed too. So um, we did actually get um, uh, contract details about Josh wow. Jacobs, four year, 48 million. I thought we had contract details on him already, but I guess not. I'm assuming two or three of those years have guaranteed money. And it's probably more like a two year, like, but 12 million a year for Josh Jacobs is pretty crazy. Um, I, it's I probably what, two years, 29, two years, 29, two years, 30. Yeah. I thought his deal would rival what Saquon got like a three year, 36 or something. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, but, um, yeah, that's interesting yeah. for sure. Uh, I'll just address this because I see it up. I have the one five in a super flex league. Quarterbacks are Fields, Goff, and Jones. The way I evaluate that is I have a clear top five in my rankings. Whoever falls to the fifth pick is going to be my pick. Yeah, very easy. So would you go Daniels if he falls or take best wide receiver? I mean, if Daniels falls, he probably means that neighbors went. So yeah, and I, would, so did I would probably take Daniels if he falls. Agreed. Um, where um, we think, yeah, let's talk about the remaining guys here because we don't really have any else. Uh, people keep asking about Zamir White too, actually. Let's address Zamir White. Um, his value is any second round pick and he's off my team. I don't think Zamir White's good. Like I, 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 he looked okay in his, in his reasonable starts. We just got a notification saying that like the Raiders might be in on Austin Eckler. Um, I, I don't, I don't think the Raiders are seriously going to walk into the season with Zamir White as their lead back. I don't, see I, it. I hope not. <laughs> like, I really don't see that happening. I think they're going to draft somebody or sign somebody in free agency. So if you have Zamir White, you got a limited window to get out right now in my opinion yeah no i agree uh this one roman wilson or jsn asking for a friend i'm still taking jsn over like the roman JSN. wilson tier but um yeah I, I would still do that even as a michigan fan uh, should i try tank dell tajay spears in 107 for garrett wilson in the 202 and a one quarterback start eight and one quarterback start eight uh give me garrett wilson here all day if you're a competitive team especially yeah garrett wilson's for like sure. a 105 in a startup okay let's look at the best available free agents here I want to see um, who's left. Ooh. So, I mean, Derrick Henry is the obvious one. I feel like uh, everybody's talking about where he's going to go. If Ravens you had to Cowboys. put, yeah, Raiders looking at fields. I did also see that report as well. Um, where do you think Derrick Henry goes? Do you think he's going to Dallas or Baltimore? I would be shocked if we gave him that money, but I've also heard rumblings that they would. Uh, I, I, my guess is no. 
And again, maybe that I this ends up coming to bite me in the ass because there's a lot of rumors right now, and I didn't believe it with Philadelphia, and they ended up actually doing it. But I mean, if you're if you're Dallas, I don't think you can expend that type of resource on a guy like a running back, especially a 29 year old running back, knowing that you have to pay CAD, you have to pay Dak, you have to pay Michael Parsons next year. So I, I think it's gonna be Baltimore. I do. Aaron, yeah, Aaron I, Jones I also, to Dallas makes sense. Aaron Jones to Dallas because uh, I could see him uh, maybe even taking a little bit of a pay cut. Derrick Henry, I'd be shocked if he took less than ten million. Yeah, no, agreed. I think um, there's a couple good like value running backs out there still. I, I mean, Gibson was one of them. It looks like he got signed pretty early. Um, yeah. I still think Dobbins has a chance to get uh, a nice like one year prove it deal and be better than people think. Um, <laughs> and shoot the Raiders. Two year you- deal. Oh, so that that means that they're they're a hundred percent trading up for a quarterback then. If they gave Minshew a two year deal, yeah, like or, or f- maybe Fields. there's only so many of these guys that can go around, man. Like if the the Vikings are trading up for a quarterback and the Raiders are trading up for a, somebody's gonna have to end up with Bo Nix or Michael Penix. God, the Raiders are such a Michael Penix team, bro. Oh my God. Please get him off the board so the Bucks don't take him because he's from Tampa and I'm scared shitless. We're going to draft him in the second round. Jesus. But um, it, what about Calvin Ridley? Calvin Ridley hasn't been signed yet. What do you think of him? Hear me out. I really like the fit with the Patriots. Like maybe not for fantasy, but for real life. I, I really like the fit for real life. I want to go to Carolina, about it. dude. Give him, please get Bryce Young some help, man. David Tepper just backed up a $100 million Brinks truck for Robert fucking Hunt. So I think he can, I think he can back up something for Calvin Ridley. Just give him, just give him a two-year deal for fucking 50 million or whatever. I could see, uh, I could see Ridley being a good fit with the Panthers. That would be my hope for him. But I mean, he could also go to like the Chiefs or something even do. If Ridley went back to the Jags, I would be shocked because then you're paying three wide receivers. What would that be? 13 million per, 20 million per, and probably 25 million per when Ridley signs? Um, I don't think Kirk is getting 20 per. He's getting I 18. I believe so. Per. Or 19, yeah. So around there, around there. Duvernay to the Jags. Please don't tell me that's real. They're not paying more wide receivers, are they? The oh, my God. Oh. Bucks are re-signing Greg Gaines to a one-year $3.5 million <laughs> Wait, deal. They, they gave Duvernay almost $5 million a year with the upside to get to six and a half? Why? They're just they're blowing their whole bag on wide receivers that are middling talents right now. Bryce, the Bucks just re-signed Greg Gaines, bro. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing with Tampa Bay, though. When all of your big signings are your own players, means you're probably pretty good at drafting your own team. So oh, yeah. I feel pretty good that uh, we're low in the uh, in the pecking order for like all these big name free agents because I remember when I was a teenager, all we did was sign big name free agents like freaking Chris Baker and all these dog shit players. And we had all this cap space because we couldn't draft any good players and we would go blow it on idiot free agents. So I'm actually very glad the Bucks are taking care of their own. Got Winfield on the tag, Baker re-signed, Evans re-signed. Go out, get a cheap option like Jordan Whitehead at safety or something, and we're gonna be rocking and rolling because you gotta play you gotta pay Tristan next year. And honestly, you write a you give him a blank check and tell him to write down whatever fucking number he wants. I don't care what you pay Tristan worth, it's not enough money. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that guy's what already a top three or so tackle in the league. You say, yeah, Bryce Jordan Whitehead prayer circle right here. I want Jordan Whitehead back. Like I want a freaking like I've never wanted a strong safety so much in free agency, (laughs) but Jordan Whitehead was such a perfect fit for our defense. He had so many great plays, memorable plays in the Super Bowl run. The punch out of Aaron Jones in the NFC championship is the big one that everybody remembers. But dude, I want Jordan Whitehead back so bad. It's it's unbelievable. Every tweet he tweets out, everybody's like, "Come home, King! Come home, please!" They got the update on Sleeper with the with the new team. Yeah, <laughs> does this mean Penny is an RB one? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Rashad Penny was like a sick value for about ten minutes in uh, May of last year? What, oh, oh, Rashad Penny. Yeah, 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 dude. He got hyped for a little bit, and then he just didn't get any snaps at all. When he did get touches, didn't he average like 1.7 yards per carry? Like, was he that fried of injury? Yeah, I guess so. Cody said fields to the Raiders lasted a whole minute. Did he get shot down or something? It's so hard to keep track of the news right now when we're like on this because you guys are kind of having to fire us in here. Um, I'm just constantly on Twitter right now. (laughs) 
yeah, literally, Min Min the fucking Raiders is such a Raiders. Why thing though? To do. What are you doing? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Can we talk about the fact that they have a quarterback room right now of Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, and Jimmy Garoppolo? That's like if you Garoppolo is not on the roster, is he? Is he? No, I think he's. I think they cut him. I didn't even know that. I think he's a free agent officially. Yeah, I don't think he's on the team. Is he actually? Yeah, yeah. People saying Jimmy's gone in the chat. Yeah, I think. Oh, Jimmy is gone. I think. I think he's gone. This is just Wait. this is just a weird free agency lull right now, but I think we're gonna get a haymaker here. And I actually I really don't oh. think the field is gonna get traded anytime oh, soon. Oh my god, bro. Didn't they get out of having to pay him money because he got suspended for violating the drug policy? Oh, right. so out of the contract. <laughs> right. I forgot yeah. about that. Oh my yeah. god. Bro, when you know the moment the Raiders said Jimmy Garoppolo was was with drugs there, that was instantly like, thank fucking God we can get out of that albatross of a deal. <laughs> yeah, literally. There's they still like 35 per or 30. Per? Yeah, they gave him a lot of money. It wasn't 35, but it was a decent amount. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, Jimmy D. There's still a lot of good wide receivers out there. Or okay. ish wide receivers like OBJ, Curtis Samuel, Darnell Mooney, Josh Reynolds. Those guys might actually command some money. I wouldn't be shocked. Noah Fant is the one that uh, <laughs> Dynasty Twitter has been talking themselves, uh, talking themselves into. If Noah Fant goes to a new team, he'll be the next like David and Joku or whatever. Can... But uh, that one will be interesting. Sorry, I read this. The Raiders told the NFL themselves just to get out of the Jimmy G deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. No, that's fair. That makes sense. What teams need a starting quarterback as of now? Okay, Denver. so it's a stone cold lock that the Bears. Jimmy G, Denver. The Bears and Commanders and Patriots are taking quarterbacks, right? Yeah, easily. Vikings probably trading up for one as well. So we got the Raiders and the Broncos either drafting Bo Nix and Michael Penix or signing like there's nobody else left other than Justin Fields and like Ryan Tannehill. Like Russ yeah. is gone. Cousins is gone. Jimmy like, G to three Denver. Of the rookies will be gone. Jimmy G to Denver. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy gross. G and then you draft Bo Nix, bro. And then you have, you know what learn. Jimmy G to Denver is giving vibes of Nick what? Foles to the Jags. Remember when Nick <laughs> Foles signed with the Jaguars? Dude, dude, fucking, uh, it reminds me of, oh my God, was it Matt Flynn to Seattle? You remember that? And then they just drafted Russ and he never actually started for them. Yeah. Or, um, when, uh, Trubisky went to the bears after they signed Mike Glennon, Mike Glennon, <laughs> Zeke, Zeke still out there. Dude. Marquise Brown is 79th on the, on the athletics top one oh one free agents. That's disrespectful, dude. They have Darno Mooney at 24 and they have Marquise Brown at 79. Wait. On uh, March 10th, sorry, what was that? Uh, Saturday, Sunday, right? Uh, the message, or yeah, the Sunday. The message the Bears are getting back from teams is that they don't consider Justin Fields more of a sure thing than Sam Darnold or Drew Locke. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Dude, I saw I saw a report that said, uh, that said um, Zach Wilson was getting more uh, trade uh, buzz than Justin Fields. I actually saw the cost was so that, low. That they've gotten more calls on Zach Wilson than Justin Fields and the Bears. Yeah, but it, dude, it's probably because of the cost involved, right? Like Zach Wilson goes for what a seventh round swap. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean Mac Jones also got traded to the Jags. We didn't mention that, but uh, that one's fucking kind of crazy. Uh, Dude, do you remember after their rookie years when people were like, oh, yeah, Mac Jones is better than Trevor Lawrence, and now he's just literally his backup? <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck, rip, rip, my, rip easily my worst take of all time is that the 2021 quarterback class was, like, special. That's easily, like, age, like, my worst Everybody take said it, though, man. Everybody said it. You can't But I was, like, adamant that, like, these guys are going to be absolute superstars for fantasy, especially. Like, when I was like, dog, Trey Lance to the 49ers, he's going to be sick. Jaguars got Trevor Lawrence. He's a generational prospect. I love Zach. Well, I loved Zach Wilson. I actually really liked how they built around him. He just wasn't very good. Um, Justin Fields looked good after his like second year or whatever, from a fantasy perspective, it's just, yeah, it's not, it's not aged very well. It's Trevor Lawrence and a bunch of bums at this point in time. Hey, hey Jay full the risk that maybe that's the risk level of this class, but the upside is that you got it 2020 all over again. Yeah, I, I think that um, when you look at the bus potential of the 2021 class, it kind of makes sense how we got there. 
You know yeah, what I mean? No, for sure. Like Lawrence is Caleb in this situation, obviously, right? Caleb yeah. is the generational prospect. Lawrence yeah. is the generational prospect. May is Fields, I guess. Probably May, May is Fields. Jaden Daniels is it has to be Zach, Zach Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Uh, Even though like yeah. they don't play stylistically anything like each other, just like the meteoric rise of Jaden Daniels rivaled Bo the one that Zach Wilson had. Justin Bo Fields Nicks, was the Debbie guy. Jones. Drake May was the Debbie guy. Bo Nix, Mac Jones. Uh, JJ is is Lance, obviously. Yes, probably at least young guy. They're, They're both young though. guys coming out, not a lot of unproven. experience. That kind unproven. of unproven because I mean, unproven. like obviously Lance was coming from from uh, what's it called Division Two or, or FCS. So. Yeah, FCS. Like, no Daniel's low key decent comp for Daniel's is Trey Lance as a prospect. Just throwing it out there. I don't hate that. Uh. Plumber, get like, out of here, dude! Come on, he's now. still really. I, he's I know he had good. a down season. He literally played through. It. If if tr if Trevor Lawrence is out for the year with that ankle injury he suffers, none of us are talking about uh, this right now. Yeah, Gavin, though stylistically that's fair, but I was more so saying like how like going into the draft, like sorry, going into that year, Justin Fields was like the clear quarterback two, Trevor Lawrence was the clear quarterback one. But as the year went along. Justin Fields ended up being the quarterback four off the board. Like I can honestly see that again. I don't expect it because I still think he goes two overall, Drake May. But like the buzz we're hearing, what if Daniels I think goes second are overall? Take Daniels, dude. I think they're going to take Daniels. Right. Also, yeah, I disagree with uh, T Law being a bum. Now, yeah, is T, he the T Law being bad is an outrageous take. Like I, I don't know where you guys are getting this. Like yeah, he finished the season poorly, but like he's not bad at all. Like his, his top ten guy. He's still a top 10 guy. He was hurt. Kirk was hurt. Ridley wasn't playing well. The scheme was yeah. not doing him really any favors either. ETN kind of fell off as the season went along. The offensive line was a lot of shuffling pieces. I, I'm not really worried for Lawrence at all, to be honest. Um, uh, JJ McCarthy, you are a Washington commander. Dude, that would be hilarious. Imagine. Yeah, Fl Flet's wishing it to existence now, too. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Wilson played the pillow That's fight conference during COVID. Yeah, I guess. But Daniels, yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about pillow fight competition, Daniels might have had the best one two wide receiver combo in the last 10 years of any quarterback prospect that's come but, out. So, but the big loser of the combine, Jane Daniels, just so everybody saw how freakish his wide receiver two is as an athlete. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, if neighbors had tested, he would have ran in the low four threes also because I think he's actually faster than Thomas. <laughs> what did Brian Thomas run? A fucking four three four at over 205 pounds? Crazy. That's insane, bro. Also, also when Daniels weighs 20? 198 at his pro day, we're going to be having this conversation too, that he might did, not be a good prospect. Did you see that Brian Thomas is flying 20? So the second half of your 40, I, I believe it is, or is it? It the, was the faster 10th than worthy. So I saw the 10th to 30. Yeah. It, it was yeah. 178 for reference, like the highest speed, like receivers that we see in the league. If you get under 1.8, that's considered elite. Brian Thomas at over 205 pounds had 1.78 higher than worthy. who literally broke the fucking record. Yeah, and it's weird too because Worthy's uh, ten wasn't even that good. I guess he's just elite ten to twenty yards because yeah. his like flying twenty wasn't that great. Like, I mean, it was really good still, but it wasn't as good as Thomas's or whatever. Yeah. I mean, regardless, we're kind of going on a nonsense tangent at this point. Uh, if Lawrence was in any other market other than Jacksonville, everyone would think he's crap. I disagree, man. I think yeah. people are way too harsh on Trevor Lawrence right now, dude. Look at what his weapons last year, Dynasty. Man. I mean, you thank your lucky stars that you have a lot of them because you've been following this channel. But if you don't have them, I. I would you buy Drake London high right now? I probably would still be comfortable doing it. Depends how high, man. Like, I don't think people are, are going to be as reactive as we are. Like, we literally talked about, okay, we'll go through ba uh, back through it. Drake London, you're taking him over Brendan Ayuk. You're taking him over Tyreek Hill. You're taking him over Chris Olave, you mentioned, right? I would take him over AJ Brown, so that's the difference. So for you, he's probably, what, wide receiver 10? Yeah. He's wide receiver 9 for me, just behind Malik Neighbors. So in terms of equivalent rookie costs... If Malik Neighbors is the 104 in your Superflex League, consider Drake London worth the 105. Yeah, that's probably about right. Um, Burrow, yes. Burrow is the only other quarterback to have better wide receivers than than Jaden Daniels, probably. Yeah. But the thing is, is like when you watch Burrow, you could tell he was creating on his own. Like Jaden Daniels was doing that with his legs, but a lot of the production through the air, like he's a good he's a good I, deep ball thrower. I'll give him that. He yeah, can throw a nice deep, deep ball, throw. but Good deep ball yeah, thrower, intermediate right. intermediate throws and ball placement like Thomas is field. doing him a lot of favors. He's still still very good fantasy prospect because he's going to run the ball. But uh, 
It, all I'm saying is if we drop Drake May in that LSU offense, I think he would have cooked even harder. Oh, yeah, dude, Bush. I, I heard I heard you were trying to get, uh, take advantage of my boy Flat offering him freaking, uh, what was it, 107? You wanted plus on 107 or Drake London for 107. I, I didn't know where he was at with London. <laughs> it was just the first offer. I respect it. But, ben um, Albright saying he wouldn't be surprised if Philly ended up or Fields ended up as a backup in Philly. Or in Why would that happen? I what do you do with Justin Fields at this point in time in Dynasty? What do you do with there's him? No, there's no way he's considered that low, bro. Like Lance went for a four last year. Like, is Justin Fields a knucklehead? He's got to be, right? <laughs> Come on. But the team. why else would he not be having a bigger market? He's shown enough on the field to command a second or a third round pick. I don't know, man. Like people are scared about his style. I don't. I don't fucking know. I, I don't know how he isn't. I, I don't know how he isn't commanding a second or a third round pick. He's, maybe he's, maybe he's they're questioning be a head case off the field. That's the only maybe, explanation I can think of. Maybe they're questioning his ability to like learn an offense. Like I don't know. Because like maybe, we saw it with Getzy. Like it seemed like like the offensive scheme versus what Fields was doing on the field from a decision making standpoint was always off page with Getzy. People are wrong. Yeah, I mean. If his own team, the entire NFL, thinks there's something that's not worth going after, we're just fantasy players, man. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We could see his fantasy production and think he's a better quarterback than he is, but if everybody else is out on fields, there's probably something we don't know, I would imagine. Yeah. By the way, as soon as he does get de dealt, if it's in a starting location for decent capital, like that's um, got to be the sell. I'm it's getting him off my team. I have way too much Justin Fields. This is why I'm asking this question. I don't know why I have so many Justin Fields shares. You love but him. I, I don't know why I have so many shares of him, but like I'm scared shitless that he's literally going to be the backup for New York. Okay, uh, let me ask you this. You have an out right now. You have Justin Fields. You're being offered the 108. Are you taking it? Oh, I'm taking it in a heartbeat. 100%. You're offered the 109 and you're taking Are you taking it? Maybe, yeah. Potentially. JJ McCarthy or Justin Fields? You, you have a gun to your head. You have to make the decision today. I think JJ's going in round one and I want to reset the clock. I think the fantasy production it. could make me look really stupid because if Justin Fields is in a starting role, he's going to be way more fantasy relevant than JJ McCarthy. But you have to be a starter to get that fantasy production. And I'm not certain that Justin Fields is going to be a starting quarterback for any longer than a season. So if we're talking about JJ over, over Justin, we're basically saying Justin Fields, you are a late fourth, early fifth round type of startup pick. Yeah, I guess so. Damn. That makes sense. Um, gave a late first in Iuke for Garrett Wilson. Did I sell? It's probably about market value. I might have wanted a second back, but that's not terrible. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, if you wanted to use London to buy Jamar Chase, what would you add? Um, given the news right oh. now, you shouldn't have to add a first, I don't think. Oh, easily you have to add a okay, first. Okay, one for a two swap is what I would do, probably. No shot, bro. You're eating adding at least a first. London's got more. so much hype right now, dude. I, I think you could get him for a one for two swap. How, how much more would you consider Jamar Chase over the market of the 104 right now? Um, At least first. a first. At, at least. least first. Well, dude, Jamar well, Chase mean, is my wide receiver one in Dynasty. That just speaks uh, to how much I love London. Okay, but at the same time, in most leagues, do you think 101 gets traded for the 104 in a late first? Um, I don't think so. I think it takes no, at least probably, it's, I, I'd say maybe a late first and a, a random second and 25. Maybe I would say at least like the one Oh four, the one ten, and a future first. Yeah. That's because I would value Jamar. I, I would say I'd be okay paying London in a late first, but I probably wouldn't do much more than that. Oh, I, I would be willing to go at least one more first on that. I wouldn't Chase? That's too much. I'd take London. I'd take London two ones in a heartbeat over Jamar Chase. London the one ten and the twenty twenty five first. You're not doing for Chase. No, I would take. I would take Chase. Uh, the the picks Damn. in London side hundred percent. Damn. I I think we could be reasonably talking about Drake London outproducing Jamar Chase next year. Yeah, like for that's how highly I think of London it has nothing to do with Chase. It's how highly I think of London. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um, yeah. with Cousins to Atlanta, Pitts lower than tight end five next season means he's never considered to. What do you mean lower than tight end five? Um, wait, where's oh, where's Pitts going to redraft? I guess is a, maybe what he's asking. Okay, so Trey, uh, he's higher than TJ Hawkinson coming off the ACL. Do you rather have Kyle Pitts or Travis Kelsey in redraft? Probably Kelsey. I think the answer is Kelsey, but it's a fun discussion. Yeah, yeah. Kyle Kyle Pitts or Mark Andrews? Andrews. 
So you're talking about like around tight end six ish, tight end seven. Yeah, would you rather have Kincaid or Pitts? Pitts easily, easily. Yeah, Pitts. London or Puka? Give me Puka. So there, Brian. Give me Puka. Puka Puka. Yeah. You buy? I, I would not buy Fields now. I would not buy Fields now. I'm more likely to sell low on Justin Fields than I am to buy him right now. It is sketch, especially it considering sketch. we. We just talked about fourth, fifth round valuation, and he probably still goes for a late third in most leagues because if somebody like, has him, they don't want to He could be in Trey Lance it. territory within like three three minutes if something gets announced right now. Like if if he goes to the Giants or the Jets or the Rams or something or the like whatever, whoever said the Eagles backup or the Colts backup, like fuck, what are we talking about Justin Fields at that point? Like he's literally useless. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> imagine he's the commander's backup and they have Jaden Daniels. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Uh, context if he doesn't finish at least tight end five next year, the community never elevates him to that Laporta level tier. Oh, he's not even in that Laporta tier now. I think Laporta's no, in a I tier agree. of his own right now, to be honest. Uh, I mean, Brock Bowers is close for me. Yeah, I, I personally have Laporta depending landing spot, well. depending like if he la- depending on where he lands. I need to too, see like, Bowers actually look like a stud in the NFL before I do that. Because yeah, do you have any reservations that he won't? And he looked like a stud in the NFL already. He was literally first team All Pro as a rookie. Do you have any reservations that he won't be, though? Yes, just because he plays tight end, and it's not a guarantee that they produce early in their career. It's like, I I think Bowers is the type of guy that can buck that trend, but until he actually does it, he will never be on Sam Laporte's. He's a starting tight end for the Chargers. Like, how many yards and touchdowns does he go for year one? I don't know. He's a tight end, man. He could go, He could, if he does that, what Laporta did on the on the Lions last year, I think the Lions are a great landing spot for tight ends too. Like, it's not like the Chargers tight end one is better than the Lions tight end one. They're both in really good spots. No, that's fair. We that's never fair. see tight ends produce like Laporta did. Until somebody actually does it, I'm never putting them on Laporta's level. Yeah, I mean, I could see him going for a thousand year one, to be honest, with the Chargers. He could. He definitely could. And when he does it, then I will put him on Laporta's level. But until he Fair. does it, I'm not doing it. Fair. Um, should I keep Ayuk for a second and Mike Evans for a third? Or Ayuk for a second and Michael Pittman? Redraft? Oh, I think Redraft? this is a keeper question. Um, um, I think I prefer Evans to Pittman. Evans to Pittman. Yeah, I think I would do. Especially like, doing Baker's back, too. Yeah. I think yeah, I think I Ayuk do. in a second and... um. Ayuk for a second and Evans for a third is is probably what I would do there. Yeah. What happening to the J Jet stock? I would not be looking to sell. If anything, I'm looking to buy. I don't think anybody'd be too concerned about Jefferson. If they are, then go send some offers for him. Yeah, I'm, dude, I need a startup. Holy crap, we need to. Do I one. know. Yeah. We, so we're gonna do one. Like our, yeah. um, we're gonna have a listener startup. We did one around this time last year. We're we're gonna have one coming up. So if you guys want to get in that, obviously it'll be for Flock subscribers. So make sure. Check out the site and use promo code FSE. It, we're closing on an hour and 30 right now. Uh, let's answer like a couple more questions and then head off of here because I want people to yeah. rewatch this back uh, and stuff. And, and for the record, if we've answered your questions or if you've enjoyed the content throughout the stream again over an hour and a half, there's 724 of you watching right now. I want to see at least 500 likes in the stream. If you guys can get this stream up to 500 likes, we'll be forever appreciative. Let's go on. Yeah, and we'll do a we'll do a dynasty startup in the next two weeks if you guys get this to... to... Yeah to uh, 500 likes maybe let's shoot for a more conservative like 300 or something i don't know maybe yeah, we're at right fair. now but yeah, we'll, um, we'll see benjamin says jsn 107 late first for Pittman, nico stafford in a one quarterback league um i think i want Pittman, nico and one stafford quarterback? There. one quarterback so jsn i mean I you're talking nico Pittman is more valuable than anybody in this deal Pittman is more valuable than anybody on the other side of the deal because it's a one quarterback 107 yeah, give me give me Pittman, nico stafford side for sure yeah i think i'm on the same page there yeah um what should i uh, who should i sell swift for um probably not another running back i would imagine i would i doubt you're gonna get anywhere close to a first round caliber asset i would say an early second round pick is what i'm okay selling uh deandre swift for or like can you go buy low on like Jordan Addison right now? Or can you sell Swift for Tajay Spears right now and buy low on him potentially? Like that's kind of maybe the type of move that I would go after. Um, Fields will get a second chance. I'd be okay selling if I get him for a late second. What do you mean a late second? He ain't, there's no chance Fields is going for a late second anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you're not getting him for a late second round pick. No, he still goes as a late first round asset at oh. minimum, if not a mid to late yeah. first. 
Like you're, he's still going above like the 110, 111. Would you pay the 111 for Justin Fields today, this instant? That's what he's going to go for, at least. Yeah. I, would I, pay I would take the 111, but it's that's that's his price. Like if I need a any, if any I need, pick that's in the second round, I would take the shot on Justin Fields. Okay, how about the if that if the 111 price holds after the NFL draft and we're still kind of at where we are right now, and Caleb again, is guess, on the Bears I, and we don't know where Fields is going, you mean? Okay, because then maybe in that situation it's gonna be tougher because if Fields isn't dealt by the draft, then there's even more concern. I don't know, Tricky. If we knew exactly what we knew right now, but it was after the draft, and I knew that the only four quarterbacks in the first round are going to be JJ, are going to be May, are going to be Daniels, are going to be Caleb, and Bo Nix or Michael Penix doesn't float into the first round. Then at that point, if you're at the 111, you need a quarterback three. Maybe you get some upside there. Like, I don't hate it at that point, but the problem there is we should know where Justin Fields is at that point. And if he's not dealt, you got to have more concern. If he That's is dealt, then he's not going to be. People were able saying, sell a late first for Trey Lance last year. Remember, people were saying yeah. it. And, no, and then, yeah, I'm concerned. And like Fields has shown more than Trey Lance, but like if he doesn't have a market, he doesn't have a market. If he's not a starter, he's not a, yeah. a fantasy relevant quarterback. So any second round pick, I'm okay taking the shot on him. But if I got one, if I got first round value for Fields, I would probably move off of him and I might send yeah. out some offers today. Um, Andrew, nobody wants the burden that's of fair. making a decision on a fifth year option. I don't think that's it, to be honest. I, I well, really don't know what it is. Well, Fields I mean, like, New there, England. There be I, why would you do that, though, if you're there. New England? The Patriots can just draft a quarterback at three. Or you're only, uh, you only view two quarterbacks as being the top two in this draft. You don't like who's there at three. So you go, okay, let me take Marvin Harrison Jr. or let me trade down from three and let me only have to pay a fourth rounder to take a flyer on him as being our quarterback for one year. And if he doesn't work out, it's not really going to hurt us. But if he does work out, maybe there's an incentive in the deal where the fourth can become a two or a three. Yeah. Yeah, that makes some sense. Um, Jared's asking our repeats aloud for the new league. Maybe we'll do like three legacy spots or something like yeah, we can figure uh, anybody that's been a member of the site, like the entire time we've had it, like maybe we'll give away three spots to people like that. Like, you know, Jared and AJ and like some of the guys have been a member for a long time and that's then we'll cute. give away, you know, new subscribers, uh, spots to the site. But regardless, I mean, we're still getting a lot of questions here. I, I don't think we're ever going to catch up. Unfortunately, yeah. I, uh, I I would like to answer all of them. If you want to leave a question down below in the comments after the stream is over, we'll try and get to some of those. But again, appreciate you guys for joining us, talking a lot of free agency stuff. Hopefully we get some more signings here. Um, we will have a video live tomorrow about rookie draft strategy. Um, if we get a ton more signings, maybe we'll do another live stream. But I think the majority of the big names are off the board. Um, yeah, so appreciate you guys for joining us. Hit the like on the stream. Subscribe if you're new around here. Check out the site, Flock Fantasy. Our Dynasty rankings will be up to date as of today, pretty much. I'm making updates to mine. I'm going to send over yeah, an same. update to the site as well. Um, so yeah, if you guys are looking to make moves, looking to see who you can trade who for, we'll have that up to date for you on the site. So definitely check that out. That link will be down below in the description. Uh, but with that being said, peace out. We'll talk to you soon.